Okay, we're back live here at the Splunk Conference. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Bo Christensen is here. He's the manager of infrastructure operations at Ping Identity. They're a cloud identity uh, security solutions company. Bo, welcome back to the Cube. Thanks. I know you were here last year and uh, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick were, were interviewing you. So, uh, so what do you think of the show this year? Ah, uh, it's great. It was great. Uh, the keynotes were awesome yesterday, and uh, it was yeah, good, good to see the release of uh, 6.0 and hope to get home and play around with it. So what's changed in the last 12 months since you guys, um, you last were on theCUBE? Uh, sure, Ping's grown by a ton. Uh, we've got over 1,000 customers now. Um, we do uh, enterprise security for um, um, some of the world's largest companies. Um, hundreds of millions of users now uh, um, SSO into enterprise apps through Ping every day. And uh, yeah, we're just, uh, Growing like nuts, uh, operations team and uh, everybody else inside Ping too. So, so the the growth, what's driving it? I mean, is it is it is it the cloud? Is it everybody's you know freaking out about um, you know what's happening with the NSA? What's, <laughs> uh, you know, what, what's the, what's the big driver? Uh, the big driver is yeah, I, I guess you could say it's cloud and uh, SaaS applications. I try not to say cloud that much, <laughs> but uh, SaaS applications and the adoption of SaaS applications. Uh, um, by the enterprise. Um, you know, if you're, you can imagine you're a huge enterprise and you have uh, you know, 35 different cloud applications that you use every day, um, and provisioning and deprovisioning users um, to those different applications um, is a, a big IT task and it can also be a big security risk too when you release people from the company and whatnot. So, so, that, so that's really your, your sort of the, the level of the stack that you play in. It's that, it's that cross SaaS management that you're helping people simplify develop processes around, improve the quality. It's really, you're not going deeper down into the stack, right? So it's not sort of going into Amazon Web Services, you're really talking SaaS capabilities, or do you help customers with that level, the infrastructure as a service as well? I mean, uh, yeah, we, we don't provide infrastructure as a service. No, I know that, run. But, but, but services to monitor infrastructure as a service and secure them, or do you stay up at the application level? Yeah, we kind of stay up at the application level, so it's, uh, you know, we provide uh, users what we call a cloud desktop for them to hit buttons and log in seamlessly to all kinds of applications, uh, so, including AWS. So you're loving, you know, obviously Salesforce, you see it in Workday explode, you know, sure. thousands of, of, of SaaS companies. So, so it's, it's typically, you know, you'll see, or often you'll see, a, sometimes we call it shadow IT, or it's a line of business buying these apps. So how does it actually, talk about the anatomy of the, 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 the realization that there's a problem. <laughs> if you know, if you understand what I mean by that question, sure. Okay. For our customers or yes, for us, for yeah, customers. sure. So, um, <clears throat> shadow IT definitely a problem. I mean, it's even a problem sometimes in our own company where, you know, we've got uh, groups that'll go and find a new SaaS application that they want to use, um, and we try to just enable people to keep doing that, but also leverage IT and um, enable IT to kind of maintain control over. Um, those different SaaS applications so that there isn't shadow IT. We're trying to get rid of that. We're trying to you know, pull it back underneath um, IT and um, you know, the, the, uh, um, the organization's control. So how does that actually occur? So, so if somebody goes out and buys a SaaS application, you see it happen all the time, they swipe the credit card or whatever it is, um, and then what? You guys come in and help the CIO figure out how to bring all that together. They bring you in both. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting. So um, a lot of times what can happen too is we have, uh, we have really large customers um, that want to use SaaS applications in the cloud that maybe perhaps aren't um, enabled with SSO or standards-based SSO to begin with. So a lot of times they'll come to us and they'll say, you know, we want to use this, this new startup company from the Valley and um, they don't provide SAML or OAuth or any type of standards-based SSO. Can you guys go enable them for us? Um, so they'll bring us in, and um, we can do it, you know, in a matter of uh, hours or days, and um, get those SPs set up, and have the big customers then be able to retain control and, and SSO in. Okay. So um, now, when you guys deliver this uh, sort of single sign-on capability, right? So what is the customer, uh, how does the customer actually interact with that? Is it, a, is it a, you deliver it as a service? Uh, are you, um, can, I, can I get it on-premise? Do I, does that ever happen? Yep. Uh, talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we do both. Um, Ping's been around for a very long time. We're almost a, we're over a 10-year-old company now. Yeah. Um, so, so we. Pre-cloud. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. our original product was all, um, was designed for the enterprise and all on-prem. 
Um, so Ping Federate is on our on-premise app, and uh, a lot of companies uh, use that um, to great success behind the firewall. So it's on-prem, they manage all of it, uh, the connections and, and whatnot themselves. Uh, for smaller companies that don't have infrastructure uh, or don't want to run that stuff behind their firewall, uh, we ping one as our hosted product, and it's a SaaS application. We could just offload all of uh, the SSO and token processing to us, um, and we handle it all for you. We give you a nice, pretty cloud desktop that you log into once, and um, um, kind of SSO out from there. And your app and service agnostic, I presume, is that right, or? Uh, app and service. So, I mean, for instance, at Google, Enterprise, right? Sure. Google Docs, Google, you know, spreadsheets yep. is you know permeating. All certainly a lot of smaller companies. Mm -hmm. I could bring that into my portfolio. Yeah, no problem. Sure. I yep. mean, you're you're agnostic to the type of application. Yeah, that's. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, it depends on what the uh, the SP, the SaaS application, is using for single sign-on. Um, but most of the time, we can work with you. Yep. Okay, so sometimes there's some incompatibilities that you got to work through. Is that a service yeah, that you some, provide? Or? Yeah, some services um, aren't at you know standards-based SSO enabled yet, mm -hmm. uh, so they're not using SAML or OAuth or OpenToken or whatnot. Um, we can come in and help them out and get that enabled for them, yeah. So talk about um, you know, the Boundary. I know you've given a presentation on, on using Splunk and Boundary yep. um, to, to maintain production infrastructure. Yep. Talk about <clears throat> what Boundary is. Let's start there and then we'll get into your talk. Yeah, Boundary's, um, so it, it's really cool. It's a kind of a real-time Cisco NetFlow type um, system. Um, but it's agent-based, and because we're kind of a hybrid cloud deployment, uh, we don't have the ability to, um, you know, look into Cisco gear in AWS. Um, so we can install these boundary agents on AWS nodes, we can install them in Rackspace or in our own private cloud on VMware gear, and still be able to um, get that NetFlow data off of um, different applications and different system types and whatnot. Okay, so, and, and and, and what's your talk on? Let's, let's get into that a little bit. Yeah, the talk's on how, uh, how we use a bunch of different uh, monitoring systems, uh, including Boundary and Splunk, um, together and how Splunk kind of fits into that mix with us. So what do you, what's your, what's your takeaway of your talk? If I, uh, if I don't attend, <laughs> what, what am I going to learn? You know? um, <laughs> Give me the bumper sticker. Yeah, I talk about you know, trust, basically, and how to build trust in a SaaS application, how to build trust in... Uh, you know, um, an organization and, and what, how you use monitoring to attain that. Um, how to be transparent, how to be uh, reliable, how to build reliable systems, and how to uh, um, kind of mash all that together and see it in one view with monitoring systems. Well, I asked one of the practitioners yesterday, I, I said, I'm going to make a statement that's made a lot. A lot of people come in the cube and say this. Actually, I've said it myself. Um, and I, I want you to you know, agree or disagree with it. So, for the vast majority of companies, certainly small companies, many mid-sized companies, um, SaaS-based applications slash cloud is going to actually have better security than those organizations. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Um, I think, uh, I mean, I think it depends on the SaaS company for sure, but yeah, I don't think there's any reason why SaaS uh, can't be just as secure, if not more secure than stuff you're running behind the firewall. So I'm not surprised at your answer. We get both ends of the spectrum. So this is a practitioner. <laughs> right, that uh, basically yep. you know, has his view about um, their ability to deliver security, and his, his response was, you know, no way. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You as the service <laughs> provider saying, oh, absolutely, come on in, the yeah. water's great. So, That's part of what we do, right, yeah. is to secure the cloud and help, right. you know, help companies. Uh, I tend to it. believe that you know, for most companies that's the case, but, uh, but we'll see you know, over time. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks for coming on We're inside the cube. Appreciate it. I didn't sure. get a question in. Dave had the whole thing. I was doing a little <laughs> yeah, admin work on CrowdSpots, but appreciate it. Uh, but my final question for you is, tell, share with the folks out there the most exciting thing about this conference, and we'll end it on that note. What's, what's the big deal this year, in I your mean, opinion? I, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the advent of six and uh, the new web frameworks and uh, you know, being able to provide uh, the tools that we use every day kind of, you know, and piping searches and whatnot, and, and providing that to uh, our business users uh, throughout the company. Yeah, certainly, and the cloud thing and the ecosystem is booming as well. For sure. A lot of good vibe here. I mean, I think people are pretty much pumped up and you know, excited, so thanks for coming inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. This is SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's live coverage of the Splunk Conference. We'll be right back. <laughs>